Hey guys, it's Trisha, the left-handed stitcher. I'm here tonight to do an update and some other stuff. I have two new starts and one of them is actually a finish and the other one will just be a whip update. I have a little bit of haul to do and some updates to the uh, stitch alongs. Some, some mini, some not so mini. So, Alright, let's get started. First thing is my finish. Okay, let me first show you what the pattern would look like. And this was the Valentine's Day Sal. And this pattern is by Cherry Hill Designs. Alright, so I was stitching this for my son. So I changed the pinks to blues, changed the flower to a star, and then I stitched it. Um, then I changed my mind on a few of the colors. I frogged some stuff and I redid the colors and now and I added a little some little elements and now it's perfect. I love it. I love it. So here we go. Here it is. Oh, I am so happy how this turned out. I am in love with it. So, and let me show you real quick. <laughs> this is a very open weave fabric. I mean, I can see through it. I don't know how well you can see through it. I'll get it right up there. Yeah, you can see. Uh, I was worried about th shadows of threads. So, check out this back. There are absolutely no carried threads on this project. Not a single one. And if any of you are curious about the colors I ended up using for the project. I wrote them down for you. So there you go. Yeah, I started out with a different yellow, stitched it, didn't really like it, so I frogged it and picked a different yellow. So, right there's that. And this is probably going to get made into a, a it's going to get made into a wall hanging. And it's, I'm going to stick it up on the wall right next to my son's bed so he gets to see it every day. Alright, let me put that down here. And here's my whip that I'm updating. This is from the Maliciously Hopeless Sal. And this is my start on the Cool Cardinal. And he's... He's such a fun stitch. It's going to take me a little while because he is a little bit bigger. A lot of stitches. And it's an old pattern. It's a hand-drawn pattern. So I had to draw in. Uh, well, I, well, the grid lines were there, but I had to darken them because they were barely perceptible. And, yeah, um, yeah I'm just... Hmm, he makes me happy, so... He was a perfect choice for that, for that stitch along. Okay, so next, let's see, what do I have? Okay, the updates for cells. Some mini, some not so mini. Let me get the picture pulled up real quick. Swipe back. There. Yep, there. Alright, so for the <clears throat> harvest sow, I found this guy. And he's perfect. Found him. Okay, I was on 123 Stitch debating on what pattern I wanted to get for the harvest sow. And I well, prompted it. 
for some reason I ended up oh wait I had been on someone's blog earlier that day and you know at the top of their their blog they had a little tab for freebies and I thought let me go check those out first before I order something and this was one of them and when I clicked on it it linked me to um, the Rainbow Gallery website so needless to say this was designed for them and it is done completely in Rainbow Gallery threads some very obscure ones that I had never heard of before I tried doing doing searches for conversions to them and there's just not a lot out there I found a few conversions but okay so this one particular has it has a Rainbow Gallery Mandarin thread, a Nordic metallic thread, pebbly something other thread, a tweed thread, and then two Splendor threads. I know the Splendors, but the other ones, I had to look them up. <laughs> um, and some of them just are, uh, you know, the one website that I went to to research it, some of them were special order. You know, so I'm like, hmm, I think I'll just convert these to DMC myself. And so I just picked a color. I just picked colors. Um, then I picked a, an orange for the pumpkin, a darker orange for the veins, because I don't know if you can see it in this one. The veins on that, that's a metallic, and it just looks weird. Even if I'd done this in Rainbow Galleries, I'd have changed that. <laughs> um, I picked a dark green for the stem and the vines, and a light green for the leaves. And then that background, I had a little trouble deciding with it. But I came up with a uh, blue checker board background that I like. So, I'm in... I'm, anxious to see what this is going to look like when I stitch it up in, you know, the colors I chose. So, there's that. And go this way. For the Gloria and Pat cell. Like I said before, I'm not a fan of precious moments. Never have been. But, my best friend from high school and still my best friend, FFF, you yeah. She loves them. Loves them, loves them, loves them. And she... She had an, a third child. Her, her first two children are nearly grown and out of the house. And now... Um, little Sophia, she's... She's about two now. And so I decided I would stitch this. I'll give it a second to adjust. There we go. This is a free pattern off the Glory and Pat site, and this just, just will be perfect for her. So, yeah, I'm gonna have fun. I'm gonna have fun stitching this because people have been saying that their patterns are fun to stitch, you know, and the back stitch just brings them to life. So I'm, um, I'm waiting. I'm good. I want to see what that, see how that, you know, how it feels. <laughs> Alright, so, um, get back to my notes. Make sure I don't deviate too badly or forget. I always seem to forget something when I'm doing this. Okay, so the next sal that I'm going to update is the Teresa Wensler sal for next year. I was looking at all of her patterns, you know, did an image search on Google and I was just browsing. And I saw a couple that I did, you know, I got those in my stash. I knew that I had the 
um, bird bell pull pamphlet in my stash and I thought I had the fruit bell pull pamphlet in my stash so I go digging through my older stash and I found out that I actually have the kit for the fruit bell pull so this is the one I'm gonna do and come to find out I had completely forgot about this I had kitted, I mean, not kitted, it's a kit, but I had processed the kit. I was ready to start this, and for some reason I didn't, I think, maybe at the time I got a little overwhelmed by the size of it and the fact that the kit has the even weave in it. And since at the time I hadn't stitched on even weave yet, I think that's what I probably decided I was going to go get some experience and then come back to it, but it took me a while to get experience so I completely forgot about this one okay so I find in my stash an old photo box look at the pretty flowers on it that I used to put all the threads in already already set up in the envelopes that I use so that tells you yeah I've been using this system since the beginning and um, it doesn't say it on the chart but I took the first you know 20 or so envelopes and compared them to my DMC floss cards and they're a perfect match so it's DMC floss in this thing so that way if I do run low I don't have to try to get a hold of uh, Leisure Arts is who put it out and try to get them to send me floss from a kit that I bought 15 years ago. <laughs> and I know this is 15 years ago. Okay, so with the kit I had a folder. In it I had printouts of the pattern that I had done. I'd made a working copy and I colored them just to get an idea of placement and I had highlighted color-coded the supply lists what threads go with what section and how many skeins or how many uh, lengths of thread were included and let me show you something. Alright, so I had found on the original. Original, let me find it. There we go. Original floss list that over in the back stitch instructions, there were no instructions for the um, apples, pears, and peaches panels. So. I contacted Leisure Arts and they replied and sent me a corrected copy and check out that date yep that tells me that I probably bought this kit in like end of 1999 <laughs> yep so blast from the past all right so I'm, I'm, I'm so I'm ready with this. Everything's, everything's ready. I would just need to grid, grid the fabric. And depending on how much extra margins are on here, and if I decide to do this in a Q snap or scroll frame, I might have to add some fabric to the edges. But let's see, I got what a year and a half. I think it's a year and a half since until the Teresa Wensler. Yep, because that doesn't start until June of next year, so yeah. But, so, I'm ready. Alright. And uh, that's it for updates for the... Oh, no, one more thing for the sows. Yeah, and I just, I was referring to it to make sure I knew. I just grabbed a little notebook 
from Walmart little El Cheapo notebook spiral. I always get spirals because being a lefty, writing in a book that's not a spiral is a challenge. And I created a little checklist for all the cells so I know which one's next at a glance when it starts and I keep track of which ones I've, if I if I get far down and I've started a bunch and I lose track of which ones I have completed <laughs> I don't think that'll happen but if I do at least this will be a quick quick little thing to look at and turn the page and I have checklist for each one that way I can keep track of which ones I've gotten the pattern for, which ones I've gotten fabric or not, you know, have I processed the fabric, have I gridded the fabric, did I order or did I pull the threads, did I process the threads, did I make my working copy, is my working copy mounted on the, um, what's the word I'm looking for, oh, mat board that I have. When I talk about mat board, I'll just throw this out there. I know mat board's expensive, so I'm not saying use mat board for this type of stuff. I just happen to have a friend who did a lot of matting for um, going away gifts. He did it as a, his own little side business for the squadron. And of course, they were large lithographs. He cut the mats, and he had the middle pieces that the colors are bright yellow, bright red, and a little bit of black. So I got, a, I mean, a stack, a big stack of this stuff. I use it, I use it for a lot of stuff. I, it's because it's, I'm not, I'm not going to mat anything with a bright yellow, I don't think so. That's what's going first. <laughs> so I mount them, the working copies on mat boards so that I have, uh, I can, just have a surface to do the highlighting because I highlight when I work on a on a pattern and so I have all all of the cells what their progress is as far as preparation and whatnot and then I yep I'm crazy I'm crazier than then before, I guess, I saw a video by Calico, and she showed a little uh, monthly sale thing that she'd signed up for, and I fell in love with it. You know, she'd done the first January, which is um, Pink Carnations. It's a flower of the month sale. It's not a new one, it's just a new, new version new incident of it and so yep she linked to the blog that was hosting it and I signed up and I've ordered my fabric so I'm waiting on that and so you know I have my checklist for that cell and then since it's monthly I have individual checklists for the months that I made up in case I want to work ahead on any of the months for some of the things because I am a checklist person I love, I love tracking stuff I'm a bean counter so this was this made perfect sense and I was starting to lose track of all the posty notes that I was writing, writing stuff down on so I did that and let's see I've printed out more panels so that when the next next year's round of styles come out I can add them to the notebook and, and keep keep on stitching okay so I am now ready to do um, my haul which is just a tiny haul okay first I don't actually have this piece yet I want to show you something I watched I watched the first video um, done by a wonderful girl by the name of Jade Tool, and one of her whips she showed 
it just it spoke to me oh come on it was I have to scroll again I'd gotten it prepared for you to show you and now I gotta scroll all the way down my history to that video to show you give me a sec do, 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 do. If it goes too long, I will edit edit this so you don't have to watch me scroll and scroll and scroll and keep the tablet scoop there it is. Okay. No, oh, no, go back. Alright. Stop that. She showed one of her whips and I was like, oh my god, that's so beautiful. And it was a kit, kit by DMC. I went looking for it online and I can't find it anywhere in any of the US based um, online selling sites. And I'd never seen it in the store. So I kind of put it aside for a little bit. And then as I'm watching YouTube videos, Floss Tube videos, you know, you have that little row of panels on the side for recommended videos. Oh, I kept seeing it in that bar like it was taunting me. I mean, like every like fourth video that I saw. <laughs> it just was there taunting me. Going, you must get me. So after a while I couldn't I couldn't take it anymore. I went to so and so and I ordered it. It's shipping. It made its way to Los Angeles. So I should have it probably within a week. So I'm excited. You know, of course I'm not gonna I might start it if I can't handle not starting it. Um but I probably won't get to it because I just got way too much <laughs> I scheduled for myself, but yep, at least at least I have it in my stash and I can do it anytime I want. And it definitely does one of those ones that just moved right up to the top of that list of what you're gonna do definitely in the future. So let me close close those down. More. Okay. One, two, three stitch. I've had this in my wish list for a while, ever since I saw it on somebody's video, because it was so darn cute. And each time I, part, I made an order from one, two, three stitch, I look at it, I was like, nah, not quite yet, because they, the price on it they had was like seventeen dollars. I think it was seventeen. Anyways, whenever I'm at Walmart, I just swing by the little needle worker section, the little tiny, you know, three foot section in the craft area that's dedicated to needleworks now. And I just page through the little kits to see if something appeals to me. And I saw him and they, their price on it was five ninety six. So needless to say, and it was the only one on the shelf. I guess to say, I, I grabbed it, and he came home with me. He's so adorable. And, of course, you don't see this much these days. Less and less you see this in kits these days, but, yep, it's just a bundle of thread. And, really, I've never had, I've never really had a problem with sorting these out. And I get, I've heard a lot of people kind of lament, um, that, that intimidated them. They had such a hard time. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe when I get around to sorting these, I might do it soon just so I can maybe film it, my process, and maybe something with my thought process will help others when they come in, when they see this bundle of thread and go, oh my god. <laughs> What am I going to do? Yep. So. And actually the sorting part. I love it. I love it. It just 
that's my nature. All right, so my next haul, let's do this. Another enabling that I experienced recently was a wonderful video. One of the newer folks on Floss Tube, and I will have to look up the name and put, and put it there so you know. But she showed this as one of her finished pieces. And in real life, it is gorgeous. And I have been looking for a water lily stitch to do that spoke to me. And this did. It doesn't look at really impressive in, in the magazine, but her real life stitching, it was gorgeous. So, needless to say, she didn't actually say what, which magazine it came from. So I had to do a little investigating, and I figured it out, and then I found a copy of it, and I ordered it. It is the August 2013 issue 225 of the Cross Stitch Collection. So I got my little mitts on this. So when I am ready to start that... Got it. Alright. What do I do next? Just a couple. When I was at Staples getting some of my pat week working patterns enlarged, working copies of my patterns enlarged, I look over in one of the little stands and I see these things. I've been looking for, you know, a lot of, a lot of you guys have been using these little zippy top folders to keep. Uh, you know, projects in and whatnot. And I've been looking for them. I don't have a Michaels, you know. I have to drive down to El Paso. That's an hour and a half drive. And so we don't go there, down there very often. Um, and the ones that I'd seen at Staples before in Walmart doesn't have any here. They don't have any. Um, they were really overpriced. Like one was like $14. It's like, no, uh-uh, not going to do that. So I'm standing there waiting for some of my copies to be made. And I look over and their little display for their poppin' brand of stuff. Of course, at first I see the pink. So I go and investigate. And it's a package of three for $5. Good, good deal on these considering what prices I was finding other in other places or for other ones so they seem pretty well made we'll see as I use them if they hold up or not so I picked up a package of pink a clear package and a package of lime green because I love this color you know you gotta have a standard white color and I love pink so I had to figure it out, pick them up. If I use them for cross stitching, they're awesome. If I, if I don't, I will find other uses for these. <sighs> Next thing is, is I got my Krennic box. <sighs> when I posted my last video and I was talking about, you know, how we were going to have to drive to the near Cabela's, which is at least four and a half hours if we go to Texas or longer if we decide to go up to Colorado. And some, one of you wonderful floss tubers pointed out, yeah, you can order it from the website. And I was like, well, I've been to the website. I couldn't find, I could find it in smoke, but I wanted it in clear. So I went again and apparently, yeah, I just didn't scroll down far enough the first time. So it took a bit of scrolling to get to it because they list all the smoke ones first and then they go to the clear ones. So if you watched Mondot Stitches video uh, that she did on this, it's the ammo. Let me see if I can read this. Uh, ammo box for Winchester Short Magnum, 50 round. 50 round box and they fit perfectly there's a little space at the top 
but not so much that if you turn it upside down, they don't go anywhere. So that's nice. And I used that space to put the beads that I have out of the case, um, ready to go for Mirabilia. Emerald Mermaid I'm working on. Um, and I was keeping my Krennic with projects, and I decided I was going to keep them all in this box and uh, just pull them when I need them because an Emerald Mermaid is going to be a while before I get to the Krennic, and the chances of me misplacing it are pretty good, and I went looking for the Krennic that I had for Elizabeth. I can't remember where I put it. it. took me about 25 minutes of searching my house of all the possible places <laughs> until I found it. So yeah, that made up my my mind on it. So what I do so far is I have my unallocated stuff over here and I have my allocated stuff over here with little labels on them to indicate which project they go with. So the BBE is the Baroque Beauties Elizabeth, EM is Emerald Mermaid, CC is Cool Cardinal. You know, so I'll make, I create little short little acronyms for my projects and <laughs> as I was digging through my stash looking for something what was it? I was looking for a font pamphlet because I'm trying to decide what font to use on the um, flower of the month patterns. And I came across a little baggie that I had with a project I completed. This is the box of stuff with completed project stuff that goes into and it had a roll of Krennic in it. 032 blending filament. And Lord knows how old this is. Because I don't know exactly which project that bag went with. Because I didn't label such things at that time. But I compared it to my most recently purchased 032 blending filament. And there is a slight difference to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I use this on a project and I use this on a different project. So I'm not going to try to use both of them on the same project. So there's that. And yep, this is a random one. Too. I'm not sure what I got it for. I know I got it for something. I'm gonna have to. Oh wait, it's probably the Under the Moonlight, the one chronic amongst the stack of treasure bra petite treasure braids. So I will move that over to the other side. And yeah, I I just I'm a storage person. I love having. You know, finding the perfect storage for things. And this is perfect. I love it. So, if you guys are wondering, yep, you can go to the Cabela site and order it from there. So, I'm happy. And then one more, one more thing for haul. Okay, so I get this package in the mail from Stitching Bits and Bobs, and I was doing that. What? I got my package from Stitching Bits and Bobs. What? I don't think I have anything else coming. And so I pull out, pull everything out, and out pours a bunch of Weeks Dye Works. I'm doing that colors. I Did I order these for something? Because my memory these days, that's why I use a lot of post-it notes. And 
notepads and whatnot. Just keep track of stuff. I'm like, what did I? I'm like, and I'm at a loss. I can't figure it out. And then the two pieces of paper that came with are two sample patterns. The free paddings, and I was looking at them, kind of decide if I wanted, if it was something I would stitch or not. And then I noticed on this one, at the top, it says, Stitching Bits and Bobs Monthly Bits Club for January. And then the little light bulb goes off. Yeah, I signed up. I signed up for it. I'm going to give it a try because when you work it out, it, it turn, comes out to um, slightly better price on the hand dyed threads, especially, well, for definitely Weeks Dye Works. We'll see for the other ones when I decide to change my subscription to other brands. But it works out to a better better price than I can find when I, you know, am going. So I decided that I'm going to start building up stash for these. Because I'm using them a lot more these days. Within the past, I'd say six months, maybe a year. My, I started using them and my usage is just increasing with them so I decided to do their monthly bits club. So just quick I got Terrapin and these were random they chose them for me so and all but one are ones I don't have already so it's pretty cool. Amethyst Merlot. I love the deep reds. Pal. This is one I have trouble pronouncing. Pamlico. Not sure what that is, but yep. Yeah. It's a subdued green. This is, I have one of these, or maybe more than one, for a project I kitted up a while back. A sampler that probably in might start in 2016, we'll see. Or my husband might actually stitch it because it was going to be something for him. It has to do with dragons. So, um, Veragri. Chickpea. Yeah, I was excited to get this one because I think this is one of their new colors. Cattail. And I'm actually impartial to the name Cattails because my mom loved cattails, so I have an affinity for them. Uh, Tatanka. Dark brown. Dark, dark brown. And Spanish moss. Nice gray green. And the last one is corn silk. So now that I'm starting to build stash, I did kind of toss around the idea before of doing up a set of my inventory cards for Weeks Dye Works and Gentle Arts and probably um, Classic Color Works as well. Uh, you know, it's time consuming so uh, I'll, I will do it. But I can't promise it anytime soon. But I guess when I hit a point where maybe I'm just kind of tired of stitching for a couple of days and I still want a project to keep myself occupied I'll start on that. Right now on my non-stitching time that I need to keep myself occupied with is spent prepping for all the mini cells, getting the fabric cut and surged and edged with fabric and the threads pulled and processed and ordered what if I need to and all that stuff. Get my working copies made. Yep, so that pretty much takes up that time, but I'm getting I have a couple more projects in the mini cells. Two remaining that I haven't haven't signed up for yet. Or no wait. One I signed up for or I had picked a project for uh, but I've changed my mind so when I get the pattern I'll show you and the other one uh, the same 
same book that's coming might have a pattern in it that I can use for for the last remaining mini sow. So, let's see, I'll show you those when I get it. But yeah, my prepping will soon be completely done, and then all that's left for each mini that comes along is to probably the day before I do the gridding on it. And then the day it starts, I start stitching. So, yeah. Inventory cards for this coming sometime in the future. Can't guarantee when. <laughs> but yeah, it's a definite thing that I am planning to do now. Alright, so I think that is everything I had. And of course, if I stop filming, I remember something, I'll do a little addendum like I have been in the past. But I think if I stuck to my my list, uh, it should be nothing that I forgot. So, happy stitching, y'all. Have a good night. We'll see you the next time. Probably the next mini finish I'll do a I'll do another update so bye. alright hey guys I'm on YouTube looking up the name of the wonderful floss tube newbie that enabled me her name is Monique H and yep there's the real life stitched So, yep. And, of course, let me show you. What do you see on the sidebar? There it is. As it has been. Just taunting me. Taunt me no longer, because I shall have you within a week. <laughs> Alright. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.